Many years ago, when the Commodore built it, it had been one of the show places of New Bristol. Eleven Crescent Drive. That's how the house was still listed in the city directory. But it was a dead address. It had been barred, locked, and shuttered for over 12 years. Thousands of days had dawned without a ray of sunshine striking through its windows. It stood among the neighboring homes, dark and blind and almost forgotten. From a certain window in the house next door, a crescent seemed deserted. Yet not quite deserted. An old woman was crossing the street, bundled against the rain. In front of the empty house, suddenly she paused, surprised, and stared at something she saw. A light in a place where no light should have been. It moved behind the boarded windows. It reached the wall. It should have stopped there, but it didn't. It went on through, into the house next door. And then she saw why. Below her, Dimly through the rain-stained window, a man appeared. She saw him stoop and lift something heavy and set it in place. He must have heard her, for suddenly he turned. When the light hit her face, she stumbled and dropped something. A small gold watch. It was probably the only thing of value she had to her name. Frightened as she was, she stayed to look for it. Just a little too long. Above her, a door opened. The door of number 10, Crescent Drive. What do you think she wants? I'm your new governess. He's got a governess. Sure you give me the right address, miss? There it is. Fielding, number 10, Crescent Drive. And they got a governess. Yes? Oh, you should be Miss Howard. Come in. Thank you. You'll find Mr. Fielding in the library. He's expecting you. Mr. Fielding. What is it? I'm Elizabeth Howard. Take a chair, Miss Howard.
Shall I answer it? Why? It'll stop ringing after a while. See? Perhaps you don't remember. The agency in Boston sent me here as a governess. Uh-huh. Well, aren't you even going to look at me? Sure. Children. The agency said you were 25. I... You're not 25, are you? You didn't like 25. Have you ever had a job as a government? No. But... Have you ever had any kind of a job? Yes, I have. But... but don't you ever finish a sentence? Yes, if I'm allowed to. Okay. Let's start all over. Sit down. Tell me about yourself. My home is in Sharon. I went to Boston a year ago and worked on a newspaper. Then I tried advertising for a while. You didn't like it? I was fired. I see. I was never really trained for anything. My father died suddenly while I was at college. And your mother? She died when I was a child. Well, Miss Howard, you're young and pretty and you seem intelligent. What makes you want to be a governess? I'm fond of children, Mr. Fielding. You think that's enough? Yes, I do. You don't know my children. Well, I've seen them. Well, seeing them is one thing, and making them behave is something else. I'd like to try if you'll let me. Well, let's go up and meet them. I did hope you'd be a little more motherly. I'll be 22 in March. Remind me to congratulate you. That's where they belong, behind bars. After my wife died, they went to live with their grandmother. She didn't discipline them. She bribed them. That's my room, and that's the nursery. This is your room. Lily? Lily! Were you wanting me, Mr. Fielding? Is there anyone else in this house called Lily? Why hasn't this room been done? Hasn't it? When? Last year? Well, I'll... I'll go and get the suite. You know how to run a house, Miss Howard. Yes, of course. And I wish you'd run this one. Cheerful view, isn't it? Cheerful. That's the Tiger place. It's been boarded up for 12 years. Around here, we call it the Commodore Folly. I used to work for the old devil once. This is Ellen's room. Come on in here, you two, and say, how do you do to Miss Howard? This is my little girl. Hello, Ellen. Hello. Barney? This is Dumbo. Hello, Dumbo. Barney! Barney's a very disobedient boy. Really? Mm-hmm. What are you doing, son? Playing hard to get? Come on, let's go out and be friends. Go on. She's all right. Let's give her a chance. This is Teddy, and this is Virginia May. <laughs> this is Barney. How do you do, Barney? Well, I'll leave you to get acquainted. I'll be downstairs if you need me. Maxine was prettier. Maxine was mean. She wouldn't do my curls. And who is Maxine? Maxine's our governess. She's coming back. She told me so. I'm glad you're going to live with us, Miss Howard. I like you. I hope you're both going to like me. Would you like to see my scrapbook, Miss Howard? I'd like to very much. Bonnie's always playing that old record. Maxine gave it to him. Look, that's Donald Duck. <laughs> and that's Dopey. And that's Grumpy, the cross one. Snow White. Isn't she pretty? She's lovely. He was in love with her. He was? Mm-hmm. What's this, Ellen? Sailor Mally, that's Alberta. Alberta? That's her there. She's dead. The man from the empty house isn't in the picture. What man? The man from the empty house. He lives next door, in there. And he just goes out at night. Nobody lives in there, Ellen. Oh, yes, he does. Truly, he does. 
He comes into our house, too. Barney's seen him, and he hasn't got a face. Well, that's silly, Ellen. Barney was just telling you a story to frighten you. I never did. Oh, what a fib. He did so, Miss Howard. Did not. He did so. You know what he told me? You shut up. You just talk and talk. Ellen, if you'll get your curlers ready, I'll put your hair up. Oh, will you? Will you really, Miss Howard? When you grow old, you don't last long. You're here today and then tomorrow you're gone. Do you mind if we turn this off for a minute? Let it alone. What's the matter, Barney? Won't you tell me? I want Maxine to come back. I love her. That's all right. There's no reason why you shouldn't love Maxine. But can't we be friends, too? Why did you come here? We don't want you here. You're my enemy. I hate you. Fielding has company. Oh, I hardly call Goodwin company. He's one of the local pests. You, you go on, I'll join you. Well, yeah, well, you better phone and tell her I'll drop round about 9.30 to put her to bed. Besides, this other place be it more modern and easier on servants. Not near the shipyard, too. Oh, come in. This is Mr. Goodwin, Miss Howard. I do. Sit down, won't you? I'll be through in just a moment. Look. It takes me exactly ten minutes to get to the shipyard. You understand, Mr. Fielding, I'm just looking out for your interests. If you'd listened to me, you would have gotten rid of this house long ago. It's gloomy, it's damp, it's old-fashioned. It's full of cockroaches, the roof's falling in, and the plumbing's coming apart. This is a private conversation, if you don't mind, Dr. Evans. Why wouldn't I mind? I was asked here for a game of cribbage. You understand, Mr. Fielding, it's of no consequence to me one way or the other. Except for your commission. Just a minute now, Dr. Evans. In the whole 15 years I've been in business in this town, have I ever let a commission get between me and a client? I wouldn't know. I haven't been watching you. Not at all. Good night, good one. You're pretty. Last one was pretty, too. Subtle little fellow, isn't he? What's he up to this time? You heard him. Would you care for a drink, Miss Howard? Thank you. I don't drink. Well, you don't have to make a virtue of it. Well, why not? It's a refreshing touch around here. Is it? Oh, you two haven't met. Yes, we have. In the library. Quite casually, but very pleasantly. How'd you make out with the children, Miss Howard? Everything all right? I think so. Ellen and I read all about the cowardly lion, and I put her hair in curlers. How about Barney? Oh. Barney and I had a talk, too. You mean you had a talk? Let's have it, Miss Howard. What do you really think about Barney? He seems very intelligent. He is very intelligent. He's also tricky and over-emotional. If you cross him, he'll find a way to pay you back double. On top of that, he has a vile temper and he's an unprincipled little liar. You make him sound like a little monster. Do I? I thought I made him sound like my son. Well, Miss Howard, it's hard to been here long enough to see the resemblance. Don't believe a word he says. Oh, I don't. It just seems so unfair. Does it? Your time for another game of cribbage, Charles? No, I'm afraid I'm be getting along. Where to? To the hospital. I have to look in on Mrs. Dexter. Oh, good. You can give me a lift. I'm going that way. You're not the nervous sort, I hope. You'll be alone here a great deal. Mr. Fielding. Yes? I meant to give you this. Where'd you find it? The dressing table in my room. 
I see. Are you from Boston, Miss Howard? We live in Sharon. Oh, well, then you're used to small towns. You won't be too bored here. I'm sure I won't. Miss Howard, if you'd like something to read, you'll find it right in there. Just help yourself. Thank you. When I'm out at night, this light is always left on. I'll turn it off when I come home. Good night, Miss Howard. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Fielding. Well, what did you think of her? Well, for once in his life, Goodwin was right. She is pretty, very pretty. That's not what I meant. Still, it doesn't do any harm, does it? I'm sorry to disturb you. I wonder if I might use your telephone to call a cab. I think it's going to rain again. Of course. Come in. It's in here. Oh, thank you. There are no public telephones anywhere near here. Shall I call it for you? Oh, please do. I'll do it. I promise I'll do it. She's downstairs again this afternoon, but I'll do it honestly. Be sure now, Barney, or I'll crush my heart and hope to die in a cell for the rats. You're a good boy, Barney. Who is that? Hello? Barney, who are you talking to? Barney, who was that? Will you excuse me a moment? Perhaps you'd better call the taxi yourself. I've got to go now. That was her. She's coming. She heard us. that on the phone, Barney? Who? Barney, I heard you. You were talking to somebody. You said I'll do it. What did she tell you to do? She told me to be a good boy. I don't believe that, Barney. If you want to use the phone again, you are to ask my permission. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Howard. And you shouldn't be reading. You should be asleep. Yes, Miss Howard. coming in here. I wanted to see the back garden, but I'm afraid it's too dark. Our garden? No. My garden. But I thought that... I'm Marion Tygard. Oh, that was your father's house? No. The Commodore was my husband. Oh, I thought of him as an old man. Well, yes, he was. A mean old man. He was the meanest man I've ever known. When he was gone, I tried to feel sorry, but... He died abroad, you know. Does David Fielding still live here? Yes. Is he as handsome as ever? Yes, he's... He looks younger than I do, doesn't he? Yes. He is. Are you his second wife? No, I'm not Mrs. Fielding. I'm the governess. Then he didn't marry again after the... accident. No. That must be your cab. Uh, do you like it here in New Bristol? I've only been here a few hours. Oh, you're lucky. I was born here. I was married here. I came to that house next door as a bride. It was just about your age. Now it's all I have left in the world. Anybody call a cab? Oh, yes, I did. Okay, it's here. It is raining. I'll get an umbrella. Look at it. Sealed up like a vault. 
The day before we left, my husband had Mr. Goodwin's men boarded up so tight, not even a ray of light could get into it. Mr. Goodwin is the Commodore's agent, you know. Yes, I've met Mr. Goodwin. Lady, I'm not getting any drier standing here. Oh, I'm coming. Well, goodbye. You've been very nice to me. I hope to see more of you. afraid they called me Liz. May I call you Miss Liz? Of course you may, beginning tomorrow morning. Would you like Dumbo to sleep with you? Barney's got him. I'll get him for you. Is Barney taking a bath? Oh no, he leaves the water running to keep awake. You see, he's not allowed to go to sleep. Oh, please don't be I told you. I'll leave the door open. I go to sleep. Good night, Miss Lynn. Give me that. I told you I needed him. Natural, not G sharp. Try it again. Bravo. And when did we give our first comfort? Soon now. Good afternoon. And how is Miss Fielding today? Cough better? It's entirely gone. Thank you, Doctor. That's very gratifying. You want to listen to my chest? What would that get me? Ah, ah. I'll go on beat it. You're as strong as a horse. A horse? He. Stop that, Barney, and go put your coat on. Aren't you going to finish your piece, dear? Yes, Miss Liz. I see you've made someone in this house happy already. I only hope you can do as well for the others. Thank you. I hope you'll be happy here yourself. I'm sure I will. They need someone like you. David isn't the easiest person in the world to get along with. And uh, since his wife was killed. I finished, Miss Liz. All right, dear. Get your things on. That was two years ago. He's never very got over it. There are days when he's the most charming man I know. In other days, he's not quite so charming. He said so going to be in the house. You have to be the victim. The victim of what, Charles? I wish you wouldn't creep up on people, David, especially when they're talking about you here. 
Show your sleeping pills. If these don't work, I'll buy you a hammer. What a game this evening. I'm dining out. If I get home early, I'll call you. Slayer's still at large. Helen! No clues say police in brutal murder. Give that to me. I'm afraid this is one of those other days. Have a good time. See now, little town? Uh, yes, the children are showing me around. Not very much to see, I'm afraid. Not first. You have to have lived here. You have to know things about people. I'm not very inquisitive, Mr. Goodman. Aren't you? I am. In my business, I have to be. Barney, wait for me. Now, take that young lady I mentioned to you last night. Barney! She was pretty all right, but I could see she was trouble. Excuse me, Mr. Goodman. Don't walk too far. Look, monkeys, can we go? Can we see the movie? I don't know. It's after four. Oh, please, Miss Liz, let's see the movie. I didn't bring any money. Barney's got money. Not that much. I have two, look. That is a lot of money. Did you open your bank? No. It's his wages. Wages? Barney, where did you get so much money? Oh, I had it. <gasps> Three, please. I'll give it back to you, Barney, when we get home. Sonny! You can't take that dog in there. Even with the ushers, you go in. about telephone calls, Barney. I wasn't calling anybody. You were too, and I know who. You shut your big mouth. Come on, Kip. We'll have to hurry. It's getting late. Barney, I thought you said you knew the way. Barney, it's so late and we're nowhere near home. Yes, we are. There's a shortcut. Barney, you're sure? Right down here. It comes out near the house. Oh, Miss Lizzie. Yes, Ellen, what were you saying? Nothing, Miss Liz. It's dark. I'm scared. Shh, darling. There's nothing to be afraid of. There is too, Miss Liz. He comes to something I know he is. Barney, where are we? What is this street? We're in Salem Alley. Salem Alley? Barney, come back here. There's nothing to be afraid of. You brought us here and we're going through. Come on, children. to do my best for them, but you have to help me. How? How much pocket money do you give Barney? A quarter a week if he brushes his teeth regularly, and he lives right up to his income. A quarter a week? Perhaps you don't think that's enough. 
Of course, only... Only what? Why did you discharge Maxine? She was a bad influence on the children, and she took too much interest in my private affairs. Satisfied? Barney still telephones her. Why don't you stop him? I told him not to do it again. We'll see that he obeys you. And from now on, suppose you keep your mind on the children and all things that don't concern you. Good night. I said good night, Miss Howard. Beer? Beer? The other one gave me a beer. Who are you? Smoke. I'm Chester. Were you... Are you the man I saw in the garden last night? Sure. I'm here every night. I fixed the furnace. Oh. And I fixed it good. You tell that cook, if she leaves the dumper open again, I'll get mad. are you scared for? I'm a nice guy. Ask Maxine. She knows. Next time, beer.
startled me. I, I didn't expect to see you. I live here, remember? Why, yes, but... Coffee. Who's the second cup for? For you. Great. I'm starved. We had squab for dinner. Dwarf squab. Some awful dessert with lemon jelly in it. I thought you'd gone upstairs. Expect me to go to bed with the children? Of course not, but... That's not the way to carve. Yeah, well, it's this knife. Are you sure it's the knife? Well, you try it. Oh, well, you carve it on the side. You think that's unfair? I wasn't very civil to you this afternoon. No, you weren't. Sorry. Oh, I don't blame you. I must have seemed a little silly rushing in that way after the children. Well, I didn't have to growl at you. Why not if you felt like growling? Dr. Evans was right. This house does need somebody like you. Needs you very much. Thank you. You know, I almost sent you back to Boston yesterday. Why didn't you? Oh, I guess I liked the way you talked. It sounded like the truth. You mean because I told you I was fired? Uh-huh. The way you spoke up for Bonnie last night. I liked that, too. I like your smile. The way your hair falls out of place. I even like the way you carve. Nothing. I just wondered why you had your overcoat on. Well, it's cold outside. How's the coffee coming? I'll see. It's gone. What's gone? It was here under this. What was where under what? A 50 cent piece under the shaker. I thought it was left for the milkman or somebody. Well, don't look at me. I didn't take it. But it was here just before I went down to the cellar. What were you doing in the cellar? I heard a noise. What sort of a noise? I'm trying to tell you. I heard something, so I made myself go down and look. Then when I saw what it was... Is there any reason why you shouldn't tell me what you're talking about? I'll show you what I'm talking about. was all over the floor. That was the noise I heard, one of the sacks falling. Chester cleaned it up. Chester had already gone. He must have come back. He couldn't. I'd have seen him come in. You didn't see me come in, did you? I heard you. In the front hall. I called down to you. But I came in through the garage. I wasn't even near the front hall. Then who put out the light? Perhaps I forgot to turn it on. It was on when you left. I saw it. Maybe the bulb went out. Mr. Fielding, I heard someone come in the front way. You seem to have heard a lot of things tonight. I haven't heard anything that wasn't there. I tell you, someone's been in this house tonight. Do you have these hallucinations often, Miss Howard? Will you stop treating me like a mental case? Well, then stop acting like one. Why won't you believe me? I'm telling you the truth. I'm frightened. I think you'd better stop talking nonsense and pull yourself together. I see. Very well. Good night. I said good night, Mr. Fielding. name of the woman in your scrapbook? Snow White. Not Snow White, dear. 
the other one. I don't know, Miss Liz. Ellen, bring me your scrapbook, please. Here it is, Miss Liz. Thank you. Where's the picture of Salem Allen? You've torn it out. Barney, be quiet and stop that train. Ellen, what was the name of the woman in that picture? And don't pretend you don't know. Her name was... She doesn't know her name. Yes, she does. So do you, Barney. I don't either. Ellen, you told me her name was Alberta. She made it up. She's always making things up. Barney, I'm talking to Ellen. Ellen, you didn't make it up, did you? Yes, I did, Miss Liz. I made it all up out of my own head. Go to your room, Ellen, and shut the door. I'm very angry with you both. You're not to talk to each other nor play together. Miss Liz. Yes? Aren't we friends anymore? Not until you tell me the truth. She did make it up. Did she? Keep an eye on the children. Yes. I'm going over to talk to the doctor. The number's 23, isn't it? Across the Crescent. First house on the left. Be gone long? Just a few minutes. I hope so. I don't reckon to be here after dark. Not the way things are. What do you mean, Mrs. Norris? You ought to know before dark. That's all right. Well, I will. You must remember that David's children have been left to themselves more than most. It was an unhappy marriage and it had a tragic ending. Since then, they've seen much too little of their father. No. Next door to them is this huge, empty, shuttered house. Do you wonder that it fascinates them? That they make it the setting for whatever play story they happen to be acting out at the moment? They weren't acting yesterday in Salem Alley. They were terrified. And those telephone calls were real enough, and that murder's real. Yes, it is. And they knew that dead woman's name two days before it was in the paper. Can you explain that? No, I'm afraid I can't. What, uh, what does David think? I suppose you told him. I tried to tell him what happened last night. He wasn't very helpful, eh? Would you like me to talk to him? No, please don't. I, I'd much rather you didn't. Oh, come now, David's not that unreasonable. Yeah. Excuse me, Doctor. Yes, Miss Black. Miss Gardner is still waiting, and Mr. Ellis has an appointment for 4.30. Thank you. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have kept you so long. That's quite all right. I think I've told you all there is. Well, I'm afraid I haven't been very helpful. You've been very kind. I don't think even you realize how worried I am. Last night I almost thought of calling the police. The police? I hope you didn't mention that to David. No. In your place it's the last thing I do, before consulting David, that is. Oh, I wouldn't really. It's just that I... I didn't know who to turn. I know we all feel that way at times. If it happens again, I wish you'd call me. Miss Bud, if Miss Howard phones when I'm not here, I want you to get in touch with me immediately. Yes, Doctor. Goodbye, Miss Howard. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. Can't figure why you'd be getting sentimental all of a sudden. But can't they put it off just for a few days? I think they wouldn't. I wouldn't care to ask them. Oh, Miss Howard. Good afternoon. Well, how do you do? You're not ill, I hope. No. Well, I just wondered seeing you come out from the doctor's. How's David? Mr. Fielding's quite well, thank you. You might tell him I'm a little annoyed with him for not coming to see me. We used to be such good friends, you know. Mr. Goodwin is handling the opening of my house. You're opening it? I have to. 
That's why I came back from abroad. I hate that tune. Stop playing that. Please stop it at once. Here. Go and play somewhere else. Thank you. I just can't bear that tune. Somebody was playing it. I heard it coming across the garden the night the Commodore died. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Tiger. Oh, there you are. Thought you were never coming. I'm sorry, Mrs. Norris. Well, it's happened. What's happened? She's gone. What are you talking about? That Lily. I just looked in her room. But this is her day off. Her day off, is it? She's moved out, bag and baggage. You mean she isn't coming back? What do you think I mean? What's more, unless you get somebody to take her place, I'm not coming back either. But, Mrs. Norris, you can't do that. You can't leave me all alone in this house. Can't I? If you'd any sense, you'd go too. And leave the children? That's your business. Seen this? Yes, I've seen it. A day worker, like me, lying all alone in the gutter with a broken neck. Mrs. Norris, please come back. I'll come back when you get a maid. Maybe. I'll call the agency the first thing in the morning. You better. I'm not mad at you, Ellen, but I can't talk to you until you tell me the truth. I'll tell you, Miss Lewis. I'll tell you how I knew her name. It was in the watch. In the watch? Mm-hmm. Barney found it outside on the steps after the woman ran away. He hid it in that door there. Come on, dear. You must go back to bed. Can't I stay here with you, Miss Lewis? Mm -hmm. Aren't we friends again? Yes, of course we're friends. Now you have to be a good girl and go to sleep. It's very late. I'm not tired. You'll go to sleep all right. Barney's in there sleeping like a little dormouse. Barney doesn't have to stay awake tonight. He's earned his wages. Ellen. Ellen, how does Barney earn his wages? He opens the front door so the man from the empty house can come in. Maxine tells him when. After he's opened the door, he puts Dumbo in the window. All right, dear. Now let's forget all about that for tonight and go to sleep. Yes, he just got back from the hospital. Would you ask him to come over? It's very important. 
Thank you. You did find it. It has her name in it. Really? The woman who was murdered. You're quite a detective, aren't you? Barney found it outside this house. I don't like people prying into my affairs. I told you that. He found it the night she was killed. And I won't have you or anyone else going through my desk. I thought I made that clear, too. Now give it to me. I said give it to me. Hello. What are you doing here? All right, Miss Howard. What makes you think she isn't? Well, when a doctor gets called in the middle of the night, he usually assumes that something is not all right. You did call, didn't you? If she did, she seems to have forgotten why. What is this, a game? Perhaps Miss Howard was nervous in the house alone and wanted someone to talk to. Or maybe she had something to show you. Was that it? No. While I was out, she made a discovery, didn't you, Miss Howard? You wouldn't want the doctor to make a trip for nothing. Show him what you found. What is it, Miss Howard? You did send for me, you know. Go on, show it to him. Leave me alone, both of you. Jumpy, isn't she? What would you suggest? Don't be a fool, David. Now, if either one of you has another brainstorm before morning, please leave me out of it. Good night. Well, I called him and he came. You satisfied? Can't you say anything at all? I haven't anything to say, except I'm sorry I opened your desk. Here's your watch. And why did you pretend not to believe me last night when I told you somebody had come into this house? You think I was pretending? You said you hadn't been near the front hall. I don't believe that. And the door was open again tonight, and I know now who opened it. Barney did. So you think my little boy's letting me into my own house? He doesn't know who he's letting in. But you do. Is that what you were thinking when Charles was here? Is that why you didn't show him the watch? Answer me. You know why. Elizabeth. Leave me alone, can't you? So this is what it was all about. That name mean anything to you? Oh, yes, David. I read the papers. Barney found it. Where? In front of the house. What am I going to do with it? There's only one thing you can do with it. Take it to the police. No. I won't do that. You'll have to, David. They're going to find out. Not unless someone tells them. Somebody always does tell them. She's dead, isn't she? She doesn't need her watch anymore. I don't want them swarming over the place, questioning everyone, even the children. I don't want anything more to do with the police. Why go back to all that? That's over and done with. It's never done with once you've seen it happen. I've seen her lying there beside the road, dead, with her head hanging limp. Everyone knew that was an accident. What makes you so sure? The police weren't. They don't know you as well as I do, David. Come on, let's forget it. Yeah, this is what you need. Maybe you'd better let me give that watch to the police. I can say I found it. It wouldn't work. You said yourself, they always find out. How do you do? Is Mr. Fielding in? I'm sorry, he isn't. Be back soon, won't he? Well, I don't know. I'll wait. Does Mr. Fielding know you? Yes, he knows me. I'll wait in the library. Hello? Hello? Yes? Yes, this is the Fielding house. Oh, you want to speak to Miss Howard? Barney. How many times do I have to tell you to stay away from the telephone? It's for you. It's the agency. This is Miss Howard. Not until this afternoon? Well, please do the best you can. We need a mate as soon as possible. Thank you. 
goodbye. Good morning, Mr. Fielding. Guess you know why I'm here. Do I? I'm working on the Salem Alley murder. We got a phone call about that watch. Any particular reason why you didn't bring it in? Suppose I haven't got it. I heard different. Come on, Mr. Fielding. You can't withhold evidence from the police. You ought to know that. Better than most people. I never saw her alive or dead. That's possible. Just the same. You had her watch, according to my information. Maybe you better check your information. Okay, Mr. Fielding. Don't ever think I won't. When I do, I'll be back. Sure, anytime. Just break a window and climb in. No, I won't do that. I'll just ring the bell and somebody will let me in. Just like they did this time. Bye. Mr. Fielding. I guess he was right at that. Well, I couldn't very... Forget it. How soon can you pack and be ready to leave? Leave? Yes, I want to get Barney and Ellen out of here right away. You might have thought a little about the children before you called the police. There's a train at 8.20. Very well, we'll be ready. David. Yes? Do you really think I called the police? What do you expect me to think? You are too. I'm not going anywhere. Isn't he difficult, Miss Liz? Oh, he's just being silly. Of course he'll go. When we get there, we can ride the pony. Has Grandma got a pony? It's my pony. She gave it to me and I ride him every morning. Shall I open it? No, I'll go. He's my pony too. Grandma said I could ride him. Good afternoon. Is this the Fielding House? Yes. You're looking for a general house worker? Won't you come in? You go upstairs, children. Start packing. I'll be with you in a moment. Yes, Miss Howard. Did you bring references? I've never done housework before. I worked in an office and then my eyes went bad on me. We need somebody to clean and serve. Well, then it's no use. I couldn't serve. Perhaps you won't need to. There won't be much to do. Mr. Feeling will be alone in the house for a few days. Would you like to try it? I might as well. What's your name? Mary Saunders. I'll show you your room. Ouch! Ouch, Barney, you're hurting me. Then promise you won't tell. I, I promise. Say it. Say, I promise cross my heart and hope to die in a cellar full of rats. I, I promise cross my heart and hope to die in a cellar full of rats. David, I have to talk to you. Here are the tickets. I've wired my mother you're coming. I'll drive you to the train. David. You like my mother. She'll try and spoil you the way she does the children. Be quite a change for you after what you've gone through in this house. David, listen to me. I didn't call the police. It's all right. It isn't all right. I won't have you thinking that about me. Why should you care what I think? But I do care. And what I said last night, David, wasn't true. It can't be. Hello? Well, this is Mr. Fielding. What? Maybe tomorrow? Yes, I'll tell Miss Howard. Who was that? The employment agency. Something about a maid they haven't been able to send. They haven't sent anybody? Well, what's the matter? Then how did that girl... David, what does Maxine look like? Maxine? You were a good boy to call me about Lily. You sure you haven't told anyone, Barney? I didn't say a word to anybody. Crossed my heart. You're a good boy. Ellen told something. Ellen? What did she say? Told about the watch. What watch, Barney? The one the old woman dropped. I saw her, and I saw him run after her, too. The man from the empty house. It was him who killed her. Killed her? Bonnie, you didn't see that. Did so. He came out of our house and chased her. Honest, he did. Go to your room, Barney. So you did tell him I was here. Come on, son, out. I thought I told you to stay away from this house. Yes. I like your house. I'll give you just five minutes to get out of it. What's the hurry? You need help, don't you? The new governor said so. Not bad, is she? Come on, get your things together. 
Is this all you brought? I wasn't intending to stay. I just dropped in to look around. I'm a girl that likes to know what goes on. You've done all the looking around you're going to do in this house. Maybe I've done all I need to. You'd be surprised what I've got out of this little visit. The nice thing about information is, there are such a lot of things you can do with it, besides giving it to the cops. Well, look out you don't cut your throat with it. Now get out. I'll go when I'm ready. Tale. You said I was a good boy. I told you I would keep the old woman. You such a big mouth. I did too see me come out of her house and chase her. Ah! Barney. I did everything she told me. I opened the door for him every night. I was a good boy and then she hit me. Oh, please don't cry, Barney. Go to your room, dear, and wait till I come back. She's my enemy. I hate her. this name, Doctor? I hardly knew her. I did. You seen Fielding around? No, why? I just asked. Don't be a fool, Sullivan. Is that what I am? <laughs> Mr. Fielding, please. He, he went out. You know where I can find him? It's important. No. When did he go out? Quite a while ago. Could you be a little more definite, please? An hour, at least. Thank you. Do we go to Grandma's tomorrow? Yes, dear. Now go to sleep. Good night. Good night, Miss Liz. Miss Liz. Yes, Barney? You're not my enemy anymore. I never was. You should have known that. I'm a bad boy. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm as bad as I can be. Oh, Barney. Miss Howard. Try to go to sleep now. Tom, please. Yes, doctor. Did you check all the windows and the back door? Yes, doctor. Everything's locked. All right, about you. Better get back to the office. Yes, doctor. Still no sign of David? No. I wish I knew where he was. Oh, don't worry. I can give the police all the information they need. Anyhow, till tomorrow. Is this Tiger office here? She insisted on coming over. You poor dear. If I'd known you were here alone, I'd have come sooner. Oh, stop fussing, Marion. Miss Hart will be all right, won't you? Yes, thank you. Good girl. You 
better bolt this door. I'll look in later. It's so quiet out there now. And just a little while ago, she... Close the door, my dear. Try not to think about it. It was kind of you to come, Mrs. Tigard. Oh, certainly too glad to. There's a fire in the living room. Oh, how nice. Turned quite cold tonight. If only I could have gotten to her sooner. No, please, my dear. He must have been waiting out there for her. If only she had told somebody who he was. You mustn't talk about it anymore. Oh, what a lovely fire. Nice and cozy in here. I always did like this house when I lived next door. Twelve years is a long time, isn't it? Yes, it is. You're still worrying, aren't you? Yes, I suppose I am. It's about the children, isn't it? Don't you want to go up and see if they're all right? No, I'm sure they're asleep. Oh, well, do go. You mustn't treat me like company, my dear. You better answer that. It might be David. No, Mr. Feeling hasn't come in yet. just being silly. It's really a lovely old tune. Do you know it? I haven't played it in ages. Now I remember it. That's it. Please play the rest of it. Lovely, my dear. Even though it does bring back that last night. My husband and I had been quarreling all day. It was horrible. And all day the sound of the hammering had gone on. Hammering? Oh, please go on playing. They were boarding up the windows. We were leaving early in the morning. The Commodore had sent the servants away. It was almost as though he'd planned it himself. The next morning, I locked up the house and said that my husband had gone on ahead. But, Mrs. Tiger, didn't you tell me your husband had died abroad? How could he? He never went abroad. He never went away at all. He died in that house. And the man who killed him is in there now. Don't stop, even for a moment. I told him I'd keep you playing. If that piano stops, he'll start back here. He'll kill us, the way he killed the others.
was sure. He had to go back just once more, and tonight was his last chance. He made me help him. He thinks I wouldn't dare give him away. He thinks I'm afraid. He'll find out how afraid I am. Keep right on playing. I'm going to call the police. It's our only chance. The only way to keep him in there until they come. Done it, haven't you? It's all gone. Every trace of it. And when they open these windows tomorrow, nobody will ever dream that an old man was murdered in this room. It was worth coming back for, wasn't it? One last time. To be sure. To feel quite safe. You'd feel even safer if you killed me. The way you killed that old woman when she saw you come out of here. And that girl tonight because she knew too much. I'd be next, I suppose. Well, it isn't going to be like that. They're going to find you here with this gun beside you. That'll tell them all they need to know. Take that light... <laughs> Tell me, who is he? Miss Howard. Miss Howard. What this door do we open? I told you to bolt it. But I did bolt it. Who opened it then? David? Where's Mrs. Tygart? Oh, you lost your tongue? Where is she? You mean the man who killed her husband in that house? And then she said she was going to call the police. But she couldn't have, could she, or they'd be here. I'll soon find out. Now, 
I see. She didn't call him. Yes, I know you are. Well, you better get out here right away. They're looking for David. They're wrong, Dr. Evans. It can't be. Can't it? I wish it weren't. I wish it even more than you do. David. I'd like to speak to Dr. Evans. Alone. Please. They're looking for you. Yes, I know. Tonight when I saw Sullivan coming toward this house, I knew what he wanted. Well, it looks as if he was going to get it. Doesn't it, Charles? Does it? You can hide a thing for just so long, can't you? And then they find out someone always tells them. You said that yourself. Remember? Yes, I remember. Here. Gold dust from the cellar. Cellar? I wasn't wearing gloves. So that's where you were. Strange, isn't it? What fear can do to a man. Well, not just little things like keeping a watch from the police. Fear could do that to anybody, even an innocent man. I just say it could. But if he wasn't innocent, suppose he'd killed someone a long time ago. David, what are you talking about? You mean, who am I talking about? I wasn't sure until now. I'm talking about the man who helped Marion Tiger kill her husband 12 years ago. You thought she was in love with you, didn't you, Charles? And then when you found out the truth, it was too late. But at least the house was still locked up and you were safe. Then suddenly it's going to be opened, with murder still in there. And so little time, just days, then hours. You knew Sullivan would suspect me. You'd seen to that. It was so easy for you to use my house, to bribe my servant, even my little boy. Barney, get out of here. Daddy. Go on upstairs, do you hear me? I was in that house and heard what Marion said before you killed her. You're still the only one that knows, David. Here, here are my wages. Give the money to me, son. You're a good boy. Now run along. Sullivan's a little late, as usual. About 12 years late. Well, I was the one that called him, wasn't I, David? You don't want fielding. David. It's all right now, Elizabeth. Daddy? Are you coming with us to Grandma's? You'd better ask Miss Liz. She's going to have a lot to say about things from now on. 